Hey gang, how's it going? Um, am I making sound? Yes, I am making sound. Let me just check this is making sound. Right. Weird stream. Not, not necessarily a weird stream. Let me turn that off. Excuse me. Um, not a massively weird stream. It's just that I tried to stream this exact thing a couple days ago and had some problems with the audio. So now that I know that and have fixed that, I can actually... Um, you know, do it properly this time. Um, so it is a bit weird because I'm not going to be going through step by step and creating this thing from scratch. But I guess the first thing we can do is go over what I did in the first place. And if I ever stop fiddling with my mic position, that will be a great thing. Um, yeah, so let's maybe just go through uh, what it is we're doing. So I'll give you a really brief overview of what a 12-tone row is because that's what this thing is based on. <coughs> Excuse me, and I am like in the middle of having a horrendous cold, so do bear with me if I randomly fall asleep for no reason. Well, it's not for no reason, it's because I'm ill. So I'll explain 12-tone row, then we'll listen to it, and then we'll um, maybe tweak some stuff or, or build on it. Cool. A 12-tone row is a compositional technique it's where you play each of the 12 chromatic notes in any order but you can't repeat a note until you've played all of the other notes so if you play if you start with a c you can't play another c until you've played the other 11 notes <clears throat> And it's, uh, it's a compositional technique called serialism, which is this weird kind of abstract avant-garde uh, collection of composers, which is worth your attention if you like weird music, basically. Um, so the 12-tone row we have is this one. Uh, B, D, F sharp, G, D sharp, C, A, C sharp, F, E. A sharp and G. Um, so the first thing I do when I write a 12 tone row is if I'm using MIDI um, I will just write out each individual note. Let me show you what I mean over here. I'll just write I'll start out whatever and I'll just put a note in each of these. Oh yeah that always throws me that there's a gap there. Oops. Get rid of that F. And then I just move these around into whatever order. And that way I know that I'm not going to repeat any of the notes. Uh, this might not sound any good. Um, of course, if you come across something where actually you have repeated a note but it sounds kind of cool, maybe you don't do a strict 12 tone row. Like, do whatever you think sounds good. Music is um, music is a, basically a series of rules, but you don't have to stick to them. So this example of a 12-tone row sounds like this. Doesn't sound like anything, just sounds like some notes, which it pretty much is. So I have a couple hacks for writing good 12-tone rows. The first hack is you treat it like chords. So you do groups of three, and actually you can see that here, this is a chord, uh, B minor, C minor, A augmented, and that. Um, and that's exactly what the chord um, MIDI track said. It doesn't know what that last chord is, which is fun. Um, so that's, that's fun, because then if you actually start with chords it's going to make it really easy to harmonize, right? Now, that might sound obvious, but it's, uh, well, I don't know, maybe not. So our 12-tone row is this. Let me start that again, but a bit louder so you can hear it.
yeah, that is our 12 tone row. Um, and all I've done is I've basically taken these triads and then rather than going up, 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 I'm going up, down, up, down, just to give it a bit more of a, a shape, uh, a bit more of a melody of sorts. Uh, hack number two, um, I quite like starting on a minor chord and then going up a semitone and playing another minor chord. I just like how that sounds. You could make it um, weirder sounding or uh, less less obvious maybe. You could start with a sus2, maybe, or uh, make it major. So in that example, we would need to move that to D and that to D sharp. So is that still A? I can't remember what that chord is. Whatever. Not important. I think that's all right. I happen to quite like this minor chord followed by another minor chord because it instantly sets out, hey, this is weird. Um, and I think that weirdness di distracts from the fact that I don't know what this chord is and we just sort of cobbled some notes together, but it's all good. So when I was writing this, uh, I wrote the 12-tone row, copied it, and then there's a synth underneath that is literally playing those chords. And it's just holding it out, and it's this nice, cheesy-sounding uh, retro synth. It's played as an arpeggio, but it's got so much reverb on it, you can't tell necessarily that it is an arpeggio. It just sort of blends into one, and I quite like that. Um, what else we got? Uh, we'll get to these percussive bits later. Um, there's a really fun vibrato effect uh what i do is i basically send this piano to ascend which is a big vibrato uh 16th notes going through a crap ton of reverb and that vibrato gets deeper as we go on so it starts over here so it's quite creepy and then by the time we're here so it's not the signal that's vibrato, it's the reverb, and just the reverb, 100%. So that's a really cool effect that I like. Uh, we have a second piano. It's the same piano in contact, which might take days to load. There it is. Um, but what I've done is I've changed the tuning, and I've changed the tuning to... Harmonic. I don't necessarily know what that means in terms of the tuning, but uh, it sounds all crazy. And that's going through this vibrato as well. And I think that's just doing an arpeggio of... B minor. Yeah. B minor arpeggio. Um... And the synth drops down to a single note, and the bass synth comes in. That's weird. Oh yeah, I had this the other. I had this when I was working on it. It's just randomly making noise. What's making that happen? That's so weird. Right, tell you what, hang on, let's let's try and fix that. Because <laughs> otherwise it's going to be a real pain. Uh, so it's Retrolog, which ships with Cubase. It's a nice plugin. And we are using Woombat. Woombat. Have we dropped it down? Yeah, I think that looks like all we've changed. Maybe a little bit of envelope, but that's it. 
Uh, so then we just uh, uh -huh. still doing it. What is that? It's not the MIDI channel. My God, that's so odd. I I literally have no idea what to do about that. I'm just gonna have to mute both of them for the moment. Because that's so odd. Anyway. Um, we don't have a traditional drum kit. We have a variety of hits. Um, broken piano, oil drum, all sorts. Because it's fun. We have a chopped metal effect. Which is basically a it's probably kinetic metal. If I know myself. Yeah, kinetic metal. Uh, which is a really nice metallic plug-in. And what that is doing is it's basically going through a chopper effect. So it's just cutting out frequency it's cutting out uh, volume in time with the thing, and then there's a delay in time with the thing, in time with the track, and then there's a delay on it uh, to keep it uh, nice and rhythmic again. So that sounds like this. <laughs> And those notes are following the root notes of the 12-tone row, uh, which is fine. We have an effects here as well, which I think is pad shop. Yeah, and it just sort of fades in like a nice uh, uplifter, you could call it. Yeah. Um, and we have a boys' choir, the creepiest of the genders. I can't really remember what notes or what the notes they are. I don't know if these notes are necessarily relevant. They just sound good. So they look a bit random, but actually they sound quite nice with the piece. So, oh, we're going to do about the bass. It's behaving now. No, it's not. It was behaving for like eight seconds. I'm just going to have to mute it. Okay, let's listen all the way through. Especially if I get all mumbly. Hey. Shut up. Um, bass synth's really annoying me. So let's try and deal with that first. Maybe I'll just replace it with Massive, which I know is 
slightly more trustworthy. Um, I really like this. It's nice and spooky, and it's sort of a bit... Um, it's got a fun kind of classic horror vibe, like sort of goosebumps type thing. Um, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Goose goosebumps, that whole thing. Um, there are some things that feel like they're out of time, but they're not because they're tempo synced, so I don't quite know what's going on there. Um, yeah, I think it's in the, the chop metal effect. Let's deal with the bass first. Let's drop this down here. That's a good start. So I guess we have to build something from scratch. Um, let's repeat that section, actually. That makes the most sense. And I'm going to repeat one of these guys. I think I really just want something quite subby. Yeah, something like that. Uh, let's put it up here. Uh, let's find a filter we like. Yeah, something like that. <coughs> um, uh, performer, yeah, I guess so. And then let's... Well, maybe... That's cool. Is that rain? Cool, all my washing's gonna get ruined. That's really cool. Uh, so, what else do we want to do? Let's stick another. I don't necessarily want something throaty, but. Come on. Maybe that. That's quite nice. What if we add that? Yeah. And let's add a bit of release. A little bit of attack. Wait. God damn it, that's getting weird. 
Oh my god. It's the chord track. No, it's not. Wait. I think it's the chord track. That's so odd. Right. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, does that mean we can just put it back to the original one? Because I actually quite like the original. It sounds like it's behaving now. How much time have I wasted on this? Probably ten minutes. Okay, god damn it. Right. <laughs> uh, with the bass, it sounds like this. So now we've got to sort of work out what we want to do next. Uh, there's a few options, obviously. Um, I think the, the melody perhaps needs to change in some way. Um, and I wonder if one of the things we can do is perhaps... Let's duplicate, let's duplicate the whole thing. Um, and then let's change its colour. Or we'll change the colour of the piano so we know that something's altering. Uh, that's how I use colors in uh, Cubase. Anyway, um, let's select, I believe there is a selection of functions. Mirror. I think that's just flipped it. Yeah, not quite what I want. Uh, what I want is a inversion. Oh, hello. That's not helpful. Uh, cool, but not helpful. Uh, Core track MIDI. Hmm. MIDI. MIDI. This is really exciting, I realize. Uh, oh, maybe not. Functions. Hmm. 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 It's a pain in the ass. Uh. No, it's not what I want. Um. Well, maybe, actually, there was something interesting in there. What if we transpose? Um, what if we transposed it? Or oh, we didn't transpose it, but we um, put it within... Come on, where's minor? Natural minor, there we are. Um... Does that just put it within B minor? That's kind of fun. Oh, 
I quite like that. So rather than getting even crazier necessarily, we, we sort of turn it into B minor. So we've started with a 12 tone row and then we gradually put it into B minor. Um, so let's see how that's that's not going to sound good over these chords so instead but it is going to get weirder I promise uh, what octave were they in oh they were down an octave okay uh, B, so let's do that. So it'll kind of sound a little bit at first, certainly, like we've got some order coming out of the craziness because um, we're going into an actual scale rather than this weird dumbness that is a 12 tone row. When I say that, I like 12 tone rows. I think they're really fun. Um, so, let's see how that sounds like with the arpeggiator. That's clearly wrong. What's going on there? God, this project is so broken. Oh, sustain pedal. Do. Forgot about that, because that's going to be on the piano, isn't it? Right. Fantastic. Go away. Go away. That's nice, isn't it? Okay, so let's also change the bass. Uh, oh, it's that same octave. Fantastic. So I can just do that and then that. So, what we have now of oh, boys' choir as well. Let's maybe just can that for the moment. So, we have weird craziness into less crazy still sounds weird I really like that because um, it's still because we have the same first chord you still think it's gonna sound really bizarre there's too much delay on that it's annoying um, so what I want to do ooh I didn't know that you can just put your mouse wheel over it and change the color how massively frivolous anyway what I want to do is let's maybe um, let's maybe call that the end. Mm, maybe, maybe not. But what we're going to do is we're going to swap between the detuned piano and the actual piano, and we're just going to achieve that by stamping that there, stamping this here, and at the end, or the last thing it plays rather. Likewise, that's going to go down, and this is going to go up. So they're going to gradually cross over, and it sounds like this. Let's swap that, actually.
Ooh, it's nice. Yeah, that's really cool because it sounds like you're going to get a nice outro, but you're not. Not even slightly. Um... Yeah, that's really cool. Um, and then I think we just leave it there. So that whole section sounds... Oh, no, hang on. Let's, let's add in a boys choir. Okay. So maybe we use the top line of this. Um, let's use the top two notes. So it'll go... Uh, one, two, three, one, two, and three. So, it's quite nice. It's put up quite a lot. Just one. Yeah, that's good. That's uh, really creepy. I like it. Um, not sure. I like the idea of this. Putting it into B minor. Uh, yeah. Not sure. Um, hmm. Let's listen through to the uh, the whole thing, maybe. See if that clears anything up.
think I've got an answer. That's really annoying. <laughs> Let's fix that now. Um, I think... What we want to do is change it so we have a gap here. Same as we have a gap here. Um, and then we come back with a slightly different instrumentation. Um, yeah. So. And we can just call this the red section. Uh, I'm actually going to get rid of all of that percussion. I um, don't know how well this is going to work. I, I have a theory about Cubase, which is not necessarily true, but I think some of the um, some of the rhythm-based effects don't work if you're not on the beat or you're not aligned to particular bars. So, like, if you zoom out, you can see that 1, 9, 17, and 25 are all, like, big, thick lines. And this is such a dumb theory. I... I don't want it to be, want it to be true because it's massively illogical, but I'm reasonably certain this is something Cubase does, or it could just be a pattern that I'm subconsciously picking up on that isn't really a pattern. Doesn't matter. We don't need to talk about my crazy. Um, let's see if it sounds any better. That one feels like it's off. I think. Yeah. Let's just highlight those guys. Uh, so what beat is that? 16th. Maybe we need to change the... Um, the instrument. Something with a bit more of an attack. Ooh, like that. Yeah, there it is. Um, so, oh, we can delete all of this, can't we, because we're not using it for that section. Let's just listen to that section and see if that sounds a bit better. Yeah, massively better. Um, right, so. We need to try and differentiate between these two sections. You dig? Um, I think we'll use something with a piano. I kind of want to have like a, a big bass glissando. So we're going to do that. <laughs> I want to and so we shall. That's how this works. So, um, first thing is to make sure we return to the right place. So I'm going to put a boop there and a boop there. And that is basically just going to be on the zero or as close to the zero as we can get it. Oop, oop, oop. One, nine, two. Yeah, close enough. Um, I was actually on minus one. That's pretty perfect. Okay, so... So, um, gonna turn off the grid and we're gonna 
use the parabola tool. And we're going to just go downwards. And that'll sound like this. Uh, maybe not so sudden. Yeah, like the other way. Oh, no, actually. Oh, no, I do want to start there, don't I? Duh. Uh, that zero we want to be slightly more over here. Hey, I got zero exactly. I am a hero. Let's put it down there. Right, now we have this. Uh, we can actually cut it here because it's got quite a lot of decay on it. Uh, release rather than decay. It's nauseating, I like it. Cool. So that's going to do that. Maybe we'll slightly fade it out a little bit as well. Slightly fade it out a little bit. You heard me. That's quite nice. Uh, yeah, it's 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 nauseating. It's lopsided. It's uh, masses of fun. Let's make that green to differentiate. And also let's make this a slightly different green. Cool. Um, I've got itchy and sweaty ears. That's disgusting. And I didn't need to share that with you. Oh well. Um, right. So how are we going to get into this new B minor section? Uh, I actually want to add a drum kit which is, bears nothing on what I just posed as a question, but I don't care. Because um, if we're trying to state that this second uh, iteration of the theme, which is not using the 12-tone row, which is actually chromatically within B minor, um, then I think we want to have a, um, a more traditional ensemble. Um, that's just how my brain's working. That's what my brain says I should do. Cool. Uh, let's just write a quick drum pattern. Nothing uh, groundbreaking. I do want access to velocity, though. Uh Probably that. I just want that one a bit lower. Yeah. Yeah, open. Uh, so we need a foot on that first one as well. Uh, I'm swapping between these two different drum hits just to add a bit of variety. That's literally it. Oh, we need all of those. Uh, maybe... Yeah. 
so now we have this. And actually, I think we want to bring in this second base that we brought in accidentally at the beginning. Um, yeah, so it swaps between the two, maybe. That's better. Maybe that one should be F. Um if we duplicated and actually this shift happens whilst we're enjoying the backing track. Let's see what that ha sounds like. <laughs> You don't even notice it. There's something weird about the second piano. Um. <laughs> Lid half closed. Neutral dynamic. Nah, screw it. Um, but let, let's not not do that. Let's maybe... Uh, Yeah, let's maybe change it so we've just got instruments gradually leaving rather than just being removed entirely. Uh, let's tell you what, let's do this. get rid of that as well. Let's 
duplicate. Uh, and then let's here get rid of ooh, every kicks except the one. Every kicks? Every kick except the one and the one. Uh, let's gradually reduce velocity and get rid of them ones. Just so, like, the intricacy of it reduces gradually rather than suddenly. Symbols can come down quite a lot. Cool. So now we have this. Maybe we'll get rid of the A's. Again, just so it reduces rather than leaves entirely. Uh... This instrument, this arpeggio type thing, I'm going to have it so it, it fades but also uh, appears to be getting gradually more distant so it's kind of like it's, it's moving away in uh, physical space. Let's hear that by itself. So the, the volume's decreasing as the reverb mix increases. Maybe even more reverb um, and sooner. Yeah, let's try that. I'm just adding these uh, in to smooth the process. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, there's quite a lot of volume still there that we could lose. Yeah. Let's see if there's any of the parameters in the actual delay we can use. Uh, we might just be able to increase the size. Let's try that. Um, da -da 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 -da. Hey, look at that. Uh, so not very big. Let's go quite big. Ooh. Oh yeah, of course, because it changes the pitch. Let's maybe just go a little bit. That's spooky as heck. I love it. <laughs> uh, right, so now what we absolutely have to do is do that on this section. Yeah, that's crazy fun. That's like the THX sound, isn't it? How does that sound in context? I think we probably need to reduce the volume as well. I love it. Um, 
let's stick some delay on that as well. And that delay is literally only going to come in for that section uh, and at the end. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Ping pong. Delay mix. Yes. So that's just going to come in there, basically. <laughs> Yeah. And then again here. Oh, before that point, actually, isn't it? Uh, how does this sound? Try that. That's really fun. Cool. So, in context, the entire of that section sounds like this. This section would be cool if we just repeated that first chord a few times. Maybe we start having some uh, ride bell or something throughout this. Uh. Yeah, I like that. And then we bring in some of the other bits. Uh, yeah, there and there. And then maybe flam kick.
Yeah, that's good. Um, I think that probably wants to be here as well, really. Um, let's add in, just because we can, some floor tom. So now we have this. For that bit, no more ride. That'll do. Let's listen again. Right, I really like that. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to call it there. Um, but before I do, I'm going to walk through each individual stage and the sort of the music theory involved. Then we'll listen through to it, and then we'll wrap up. So, a 12-tone row is where you play each of the 12 chromatic notes, one after the other, and you don't repeat a note until you've played all of them. Um, I have a couple sound design -y type things going on. I have a detuned piano, and you can, in contact and some of the other instrument libraries, you can find different tunings basically because of when we were first developing music and we first came across scales, we would only really use one scale and we would tune a piano or a harpsichord or whatever else to that scale. Which sounds weird, scales aren't exactly the intervals that we know and love and use every day now. Um, they, they used to be slightly different, but then if you tried to play a B major scale on a C major piano, it would sound horrendous. So that's what we're making use of. We've basically got a detuned, intentionally detuned piano here. And we're swapping between piano one and the detuned piano. Uh, but they're routed through the same uh, reverb, basically, to make them sound like they're the same piano. And that's why we're using the same instrument. Uh, we have a vibrato underneath the reverb for that send. And the wider we make that vibrato, the more chaotic it sounds. So it's not like the piano is in a weird vibrato -y space. Uh, how do I say it? It's not that the piano is out of tune and weird, it's that the space is out of tune and weird, which is kind of a mind screw. It's quite fun. Um, 12 tone rows, you can group them in threes, so you've got four groups of three, and you can sort of try and do them in three triads, and then whatever notes you've got left over. 
that's kind of a hacky way to do it, but I think it's the easiest way because then it's really easy to harmonize those, which we found here. Uh, I'm using um, tempo synced chopping on a semi ambient, semi paddy effect to create a rhythm. And then I'm using broken instruments to create more of a rhythm, uh, oil drums, metal things, piano hits and so forth. Then we've basically altered the notes of the 12 tone row to pretty much the closest approximations of those pitches in B minor. And that's our end bit. And then we're crossing between the D tune piano and the regular piano at the end. Um, because it's cool. And the reason all of these tracks are titled Piano 1 is because I started by writing the 12 tone row and then I copy and pasted that a million times. Uh, it looks weird, but it's not all piano. But I don't notice that. It doesn't matter to me. Anyway, let's listen to the whole thing and then I will disappear for a few days anyway. Spoopy as heck. Uh, there's a few weird things. Mm, I'm umming and ahhing about that last note. I might just bail on it. The uh, the last bass wobble. Uh, I suppose I could introduce some more drums, like traditional drums throughout. Just maybe bits of ride cymbal or something. Um, this doesn't sound like a new section until you get to here. 
So maybe if we just drastically dropped the velocity of this. What does that do? That sort of helps. And maybe this base downward could continue to about there or something, just as an example. Uh, yeah. That's a bit more chaotic. Yeah, that's quite cool. And we only made one use of this effect, which I don't necessarily mind. I just think there's quite a lot to it, so it might be a shame to have only used that once. However, I think this is really cool. Um, thanks for hanging out. Not while I made it, but whilst I talked about 12 Tone Rose and I made this new couple sections and uh, fiddled around with the whole thing. This has been really fun. Uh, my usual stream time is Mondays at... Uh, 5 p.m. ish. Uh, I'm doing this one because I've been really sick and I'm still feeling a bit crummy actually, so um, I might go pass out for a bit. Uh, other stuff, I do guitar videos every Friday at 4 p.m. GMT on YouTube. Uh, sometimes it's music theory, sometimes it's music tech, sometimes it's just me complaining. Uh, I think this week is me complaining. 4 p.m. GMT, YouTube, uh, look for... LT guitarist or Liam Taylor guitar. Either of them will point you in the right direction. Um, I stream games as Splets Play, S P Let's Play, all one word, on Twitch, twitch.com forward slash Splets Play. Um, Twitch TV, I always do that. Twitch TV forward slash Splets Play. Uh, that's Wednesday evenings. I didn't do one yesterday again because ill, so I might. If I have the energy, do a Splats play tonight. Probably Warcraft 2, because Warcraft 2 is awesome. Um, if you want to keep up to date with when I stream, um, or news about everything I do, at LT Guitarist on Twitter, that's the best place. I'll post there right before I stream, sometimes during. Uh, and then when the archive goes live, it'll go live. I'll um, post about it by Twitter, at LT Guitarist. Thanks a lot. This was cool, and I will uh, see you later. Toodles.